Hey everybody, welcome back. Chuck and Stacy here with VL Buzz Weekly. We are back with Goku from Dragon Ball, Sean Shamel. Let's, Let's get, get buzz. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to VL Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacy J. Aswan. And we're back. Um, I, so, I would have been a baseball announcer. That's what so, I, and I don't even like baseball that much. So what were you saying about Goku and Rush? So well, Rush and, and Go. Well, I was just saying about like like Dragon Ball. It was really was what I was trying to get at is like I, when I when I lay in bed at night and I think about you know the whole Dragon Ball phenomenon, I picture just this guy, Akira yeah. Toriyama. He's in the '80s. He's a, uh, an aspiring manga artist, and he's just in Japan with an idea and he's drawing his Dragon Ball, right? And he's trying to get it shopped around and doing whatever and you know, and he finally gets it picked up. And then it that's a big hit. And then they make a Japanese character and then it's and like this one little guy we have this worldwide Dragon Ball phenomenon, which I am really technically an ancillary part of. Yeah. You know, when you look at the grand scheme yeah. of things, you know, I'm the dub actor in the English-speaking countries. You know, and you've got Moscow Nozawa in Japan, and, and there's a French Goku and a German Goku, etc., and, and and German cast, etc. But I think about that whole thing and how the power of one man in art can have this much mm -hmm. influence. Crazy. And I've never even met the guy, and I owe my whole life to the guy. And you know, in terms of of what I've been able to yeah. uh, do with yeah. the character and, and yeah. what it's given me, you know. Yeah. So it's and when I say that, like, well, the reason it's like Rush to me is like Dragon Ball is one of those things. Is like like my favorite band, Rush. It's like yes, they have some broad, broad appeal, but there's always the hardcore cult of core because mm -hmm. Rush is quasi mainstream and was mainstream in the '80s and '90s yep, to yep, some degree, yep. but also have this cult, you know, totally. this cult core following. And yeah. Dragon Ball is the same way. I meet my hardcore Dragon Ball cult fans, and then I got. You know the casual fans, and then and then you see Dragon Ball references on other. Sh I think I saw a Kamehameha reference on Teen Titans the other day, or mm. something, the other, or something like that. And I see it everywhere. I think it was even a South Park reference at one point. So it's like this weird. Uh, it's just never. I, every time I think I'm done screaming, they call me up and go, well, "There's more of it." And I'm like, "Oh my god!" You got more air in you. They need more screaming. But it's it is, it is the gift that keeps on giving. It's the yeah. only thing I can That's say. That's awesome, it's, dude. And I love it. You know. Hey, Schwan. Hey, Schwan. Um, <laughs> Sean, um, do you still audition? Oh, I audition all the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So do you have any do's and don'ts for auditioning that you <laughs> One of my don'ts, share? and I'm talking to you, rest of voice oh. acting community. <laughs> This must be a big dump. No, it's, a bit, it's just annoying as me. I hate it when I go. I mean, I love my agent <laughs> to death. I'm with Arlene Thornton and Associates, by the way, and I love and 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 I love the fact that my friend Steve Bloom's there also. I'm like, yeah. Steve Bloom's there because I'm yeah. a fan of his also. Um, and once I found out he was at the same agency, I'm like, oh, it's so exciting. <laughs> um, one of the things I hate is when I go into a group audition and someone's trying to like schmaltz up the the slate. Like Sean Schimmel reading for the part of so and so, like, and they're not even in character. They're like, yeah. I'm so and so, and I'm <laughs> you like me now because of my slate, and it doesn't matter how good I act after the fact, <laughs> but my slate is so handsome. You're gonna, that's my extra selling point. Yeah. I hate it. I'm gonna stop it. Just slate and get to the part. Just slate and go. Drives me nuts. <laughs> I don't slate the way I slate in character, and I don't believe in slating. I've had some. You always slate in character. I always slate in character. Here's why. And uh, there's actually a technical reason why, and there's a professional reason why. I've heard other casting directors say, well, slate kind of in character just to know. I'm like, no, 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 no. Because if I slate kind of in character, I'm showing you behind the curtain a little bit. Right, And then right, you're right. going to not be, you're not going to be as fooled if I'm changing my voice to do a character, if you've heard me kind of half-ass it. So mm -hmm. I slate 100% in character, 100% of voice, because I don't want you halfway through it going, well, he doesn't really sound like a teenager or a monster. Because I know how uh, voices, I, I know how listening to something can affect your influences unconsciously. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, they may not think that they're being influenced by that, but I don't want you but to they have. Are. Yeah. And yeah, they are. Yeah. So I don't want you looking behind the curtain at all. Right. And so I don't care if I don't get the part because I'm slating full voice. That's how I roll, and that's all there is to it. So mm -hmm. uh, I try to. Uh, what was the question? Do's and don'ts. Um, yeah. So don't. So for you, for, for me, you, is, is do not schmaltz up, your, schmaltz slate. up your slate. Just slate, slate your name. And get the hell out. Get in the hell out. out. Slate one hundred percent character as long as it's legible. Because sometimes I'm doing like, yeah. so monster vein. I was on channel monster three. I don't want to, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I will be more, maybe more articulate. But uh, the other, let's see, the other thing for slating. Um, multiple takes only if they're really, really different. Um, I try, you know, a lot of people will record and edit. Like crazy, and that can be the way you work. I find that if you uh, you you know really master the part and just do it all in one take, 
it sounds more organic. Although yeah. I will do some editing. I'm also a big believer in sending a very polished product and it may only give you a 0.1% edge or a 2% edge or even nothing. So I, I use very good equipment, a very dead room. Um, I, I mix and master everything I send you out. You like your gear. I like my gear and I like yeah. using it. Yeah. Um, and I want to make sure that when they hear it, I don't want to have to producer to go, wait, turn it up. I don't understand. Yeah. I'm making a producer yeah. sound like Woody yeah. Allen or right. something, but yeah. turn it up or, or, or wait a second, it's too distorted. Oh wait, why does he sound thin and nasty? Why Why can't I hear the tease? You know, yeah. I want to make it to where Why just does he sound right. like he's on a USB mic? Mike, yeah, <laughs> yes. So, a snowball. <laughs> so I try to analyze the script and analyze the character, and if a crazy voice comes out of that emotionally that's nothing like the spec, I go with it. Mm -hmm. Because you might be showing them Good what they you. don't, what they they don't know, they they don't know what they want, mm -hmm. and they, yeah. they, those words they're using, those adjectives they're using, might be might have a different meaning to you, or might mean something to you vocally. So I really try to pay attention to the character, and 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 yeah. sometimes I just pull something way out of left field that I'm like, I don't even know if they're gonna like this, but I'm going for it. So I guess if you're an aspiring voice actor, or you or you are a voice actor, or you or you haven't been doing it for a very long time, you know, you've gotta you've gotta figure out. Uh, how to get through the copy and and meet their needs and and stick true to what you know makes you yeah. you. And then do you forget about it? Oh, absolutely. Oh, oh my God. Oh you my God. You don't dwell on oh the my fact God. that. Are oh, you you'll go crazy. <laughs> you'll go crazy. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. When I audition, I, I remember getting called like. I got called for a show like six months. And I go, oh, I auditioned for that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You gotta forget about it, and you gotta not get jealous and competitive of other actors because you have something they don't and they have yeah. something you don't and yeah. nobody's the same. Yeah. Yeah. And so you're gonna, so I don't ever, like if I audition against Jess, who you know is a buddy of ours, yeah. he's booking it, I don't go, oh Jess, I just go, shit, fine. Yeah. I mean, I, good for him. Like yeah. I don't care because I'm thinking about the next job. And, and that's the other thing. There's no such thing as a once in a lifetime opportunity as long as there's governments and money and TV shows and an infrastructure so if you don't get, you don't need to go, oh, it's the most laptop, I'm never going to be the voice of the character I wanted to be forever and ever. There's going to be another show. Yeah. Then it might be even better than that yeah. one. Yeah. So focused on the next Absolutely. thing. Exactly. And they'll keep your, keep your head yeah. going. So you do um, voice matching. I have done some voice matching, yeah. Um, do you have, I mean, like you did Christian Bale for the iPad, For the Batman, Batman Dark Knight yeah. Rises, I had to do that. I had to voice match, uh, voice match singing. David Cross for some Disney show. I can't remember if it was Sophia the First or another show, because and I thought I thought that's odd. David Cross can sing because I've heard him sing before, mm -hmm. and I, I asked. Uh, I said I think he either wasn't available or didn't mm -hmm. want to do it. So sometimes when someone's not available or do they don't want to do it. Right, right. Do you have a, a kind of a process of? I mean, obviously you hear things phonically, you know, and, and with your music background, how, do you have a process for how you arrive at? Voice match. matching? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, for, there's there's several ways I go about it, and and and, and I you know I have a, a recording studio that I run out of my house that uh, I you know I have a lot of gear that allows me to play with this sort of thing. So, if I have to voice match, uh, I will find as much material as I can on YouTube or and back before YouTube, I would get online and I would jo go try to find weird MP3s or watch TV shows or record things. For example, when I did. When I had to voice match Christian Bale for the Dark Knight Rises iPad game, after I got the part, even after that, I went through the original Batman movie, because the hard part of do about doing Christian Bale is not Batman, it's Bruce Wayne, because there's not much there. It's yeah. pretty milk toast, And I think he does it on purpose. He's supposed to be milk toast billionaire. Yep. Then, you know, so it's great, he, and he did a great job, but I'm like, okay, there's not an accent here. It's a very plain voice. What's unique about this that I can hook onto? So what I did is I imported the movie into Pro Tools, and then I went and the audio, then I went through every single uh, Bruce Wayne line, and I cut and paste them onto one track, back to back, and then I took every single Batman line and put the, cut and paste that on another track, then I put it in my iPod, then on the way to work, back and forth, I would just listen to all those over and over. Mm -hmm. and then, so and you can hear the difference. So I can hear every word, word single goes, word, yeah. and I would listen to certain words or certain phrases <clears throat> um, over and over and over, and then I'll repeat it That's a great idea, with man. my microphone as I'm doing it, yeah. or even on the, the iPod mic, so, it sound, so once I can't hear the difference, and I go back and forth, and I do it over and over and over and over and over, and then I and I and I I, I do that until I feel satisfied, um, and try to get as close as possible. And and there's a lot of voice match work in L.A. And I know a couple guys who do it. Uh, they're, they're voice stand-ins for certain famous celebrities. Um, I have mixed feelings about it because sometimes I can do a voice instantly, but if I got to spend like three or four hours getting that voice down, and I know somebody like Jess is just going to knock it out of the park, I won't even audition. I'm just like, okay, this is not even in my wheelhouse. Right. I could learn this. I could get it. Mm -hmm. um, 
and you know, a lot of that depends on how much other work you got going on. Because sometimes you you're, you're so desperate, you 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 got to do every single yeah. audition. Right. And I, yeah. I still do, you know, most every audition I can. But I've been busy with the convention schedule, and I've been busy with Dragon Ball Super, so I have not been able to uh, to audition as much as I would like. So if but, you feel like you are not really one hundred percent satisfied. You'll pass. I'll pass. Oh, yeah. I'll pass a lot. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I'll send it in just for kids, and I'll do other tricks though. Like if they send me, if they send, I, I'll try to match the audio. Meaning, if they send me <laughs> something off a lav mic from a live set, well, then I'll put my mic in figure eight mode so it's more opened up. I'll back off of it, then I'll EQ it to where it sounds like the EQ sounds like they've chopped off the same frequencies because a producer can't. A lot of times, like if I come in on a large diaphragm condenser and it's got all the low frequencies and I haven't chopped off the low end or the high end, they go, "How come that guy sounds bassy?" Like I always imagine that. <laughs> That producers have no Spoiler. knowledge of sound whatsoever, and they just know what they like. Yeah. I'm not right. saying they're not talented. No, but I'm it just does saying, help, man. Exactly. Like if you hear something and it's just supposed club. to be on a telephone, yeah. and you're not, they're like, they don't sound like they're on a telephone. telephone. Yeah. Like, no, like, he can't have no. The we do that after. He doesn't but sound like he's on a telephone. Yeah. So I try to make it match the sound they've sent me from that as well. And if it's like. Crunchy, or whatever. I'll try to make it sound Put exactly little, the same. Some cornflakes. <laughs> no, yeah. I really try to hold their hand when it comes to the the, the yeah. sonic quality. I try yeah. to hold the producer's hand yeah. in that way. Well, um, you get crazy. What microphone do you use in your studio? I use. Don't um, get complicated now. This he's is like, the, I have 74. This is for the folks out there. I use a blue Kiwi mic. Is my main go-to mic. And here's a funny story. I think that mic is really, really great for women. Yeah. Less great for men. Uh, but I bought it because it was before I knew a lot about gear, and I read a lot of good things about Blue, and they were giving away a free preamp for a thousand dollar preamp. So I'm like, I have much money. I'm like, cool. And I did it. And that 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 preamp actually was a really, really good preamp. I no longer use that pre, but it's it is an excellent pre, um, because as I learned more about gear and about my voice, so I was about to get rid of that mic because it emphasizes a, a high mid frequency in my voice that I don't really like. Yeah. Uh, and to me, my mic and my preamp and my gear is my tuxedo. Well, of meaning, course. Meaning, you know, people, why you buy expensive gear? You don't need it. No, you don't need it. You really need a treated room more than you need expensive Absolutely. gear. Absolutely. Yeah. You want a dead room that's, you know, no background noise. You want yeah. a good dead room. However, I'm a picky ass. So, yes, my room is dead, but I also want to have it sound. I want it to where my voice sounds so gorgeous on it, they don't even give a shit if I can act. They're like, this guy's <laughs> voice is amazing. He's not a good actor, but I'll hire him. Oh like, my you God. know what I mean? Like, I don't like give a shit. I wonder like, how many times you've actually booked a job because I'm, they said that. I can think of one maybe. <laughs> I don't know that they said that, but I remember when I got the part, I'm like, I am not right for this. Yeah. It must have been my great yeah. sounding He's mic. Like, I mean, that never happens, but that's uh, my thinking. So I'm trying to go to the nth degree. So I, I did a lot of <laughs> Testing and I tested a bunch of other mics. There's a lot of mics I really like. My, one of my favorites is the Neumann M149 tube mic. Yeah, that's um, nice. I love that mic. Um, the Neumann R170, no, 170R, um, which we're currently using on Dragon Ball Super, which really takes a lot of high SPLs so that I can really hammer that mic on the yeah. vocals. Um, but I found that once I paired up uh, my blue. Kiwi mic, which I was about to get rid of with a Rupert Neve Designs Shelford Mic Pre EQ EQ compressor, yeah. which cost me way too much money, but it is worth every penny. Yeah. And when you add that silk circuit switch, everything just kind of comes Boom. to life yeah. because it's adding second and third yeah. order harmonic distortion. Yeah. That's, well, and uh, that's the anyway. thing. See, a lot of people don't even realize we're just going to geek out for two yeah. seconds. We're geeking out. Two sorry. seconds. Two seconds. You can Tonight's grab. Episode of you geek can talk. grab the best microphone in the world. Yep. Yeah. But if you have a crappy preamp. Preamp. Oh yeah. That mic is gonna sound just ruined it. crappy. Yep. You can take a mediocre mic mm -hmm. and put it through a really nice preamp, mm -hmm. and it's gonna sound like an amazing mic. Yeah. So when you take a great mic with a great preamp and a room and a room, room of the course, room. Yeah. and all of a sudden, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, I, I've heard people say, "Oh, you don't really need a preamp. It's not important." It's it like, is very important. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's pretty important, man. Oh yeah. It I mean, if, very, if what you're important. selling is your sound, exactly. don't you want to capture it? Mm -hmm. Well, of course. And pl plus, I'm a musician, so I'm like, well, even if even if I even if this is a tuxedo for my work, I've also got a really great pre to record my music through, yeah. and I want to sound good in my songs. So when I record something, you know, vocally uh, or you know, even with instrumentals, I've got a really great pre to work. And and I've been so impressed with uh, the, the Universal Audio plugins are now crazy. The, they are crazy accurate. Like they used to not be accurate in the yeah. last couple of years with the Apollo stuff and the yeah, high DSP. Yeah. Oh, Oh my Out God! That LA two A plugin. Yeah, it's I, man, I will, awesome. I will hit that thing all day, and it's just my sound like a huge. Yeah. I love all that stuff, and it's fun to play with, and it also it, it's also a feedback loop. And this is another thing I want to tell uh, young voice actors: like, well, I don't have the money. I don't know. Well, it depends on what lights your fire. For me. 
Um, I'm more motivated to audition because one of the bonuses is I get to play with good gear and hear great sounds. So part right. of it's the motivation to be an actor. Part of it is like, oh, I can't wait to get in my studio and hear these great sounds that I'm going to make yeah. with my voice on this great sounding gear. And that fuels me to do more. So it's all mm -hmm. as a feedback loop of yeah. fuel to yeah. to want to give a great yeah. performance. And I can do it on crap gear and I've done it on crap gear and, I, and that's fine. And as I get older, I, I'm more concerned about the room than I am the gear. Yeah. I, and once I settled on that mic and that pre, I, I'm pretty much... I, I pretty I, when I bought the pre, I'm like I'm looking for something to kill my gas, and yeah. if you know what gas is gear acquisition syndrome, where you buy buying gear you don't need. Yeah, yeah. And so I found the the Rupert Neve pre, and I'm like this pre is the <laughs> pre for me, and and I am absolutely uh, I, I can't recommend it enough. What about when you're on the road? Do you use any like uh, when I'm on the road? Well, I used to audition on the road all the time, gear? and I didn't book anything on the road, so I got sick of auditioning on the road because what happens is I go to a con for eight hours, I'm exhausted, and usually when I get done with a convention, I go to my hotel room and I lay in bed and I stare yeah. at the ceiling and then usually nine o'clock rolls around and I've forgotten to eat dinner and I'm like oh okay I gotta eat okay and I do not want to psychologically prepare 12 auditions yeah. uh, and a lot of people think it's a dumb idea to not do it and it, but I, I, I'm all here's the other thing I'm also trying to control quality yeah. in right. other words I don't want to have a reputation, I don't want to just throw auditions out there that I half asked because I was exhausted at a con yeah. and now I'm getting a reputation of being an okay no, voice actor. No, no, no. So it's about quality control yeah. also. Absolutely. So yeah. if I, unless I think I can kill it, yeah. I'm not going to do it. So when I'm on the road, I use the um, Apogee, uh, the yeah, Apogee the mic, mic. The, yeah. the iMic, which believe it or not, I did an A-B test in my recording studio. That thing, it sounds oh, great. It sounds really good. It sounds yeah. great. Really, really yeah. great. Yeah. And so I'll use that guy. Stacy uses yeah. that as well. Like on the road, that's yeah. a good one. So when you think about your career, mm -hmm. what do you think at this point where you sit have been the keys to your career success and longevity? Oh, that's a really, really good question. You know, a lot of people think I got a lot of work uh, because I had this big part in Dragon Ball. And one of the things that I think people don't realize, uh, even even veteran voice actors, is getting <coughs> getting a big part on a show doesn't mean you get a part on another show. When I moved to New York, I, I was there six months before I got a part, and I had audition, audition, audition. They didn't give a crap I was on Dragon Ball. They, they did not care at all. Every once in a while, I've done a video game uh, here in L.A. where at the end of the session, the, the talk back, like I remember working for Bethesda, and at the end of one session, they, they said, okay, we done? Okay. Hey, Sean, we just want to say we're big fans. We're great having you on the show. And I don't even like it when they cast me because of that. Like, mm -hmm. I remember I, got, I was working on a, a Sony property, a big title, last year, and a friend of mine who I'd been friends with at Software Etc. when I worked at Software Etc. in the 90s had become a writer and wrote the game. And he said, I go, and so I had lunch with him. And I'm like, dude, you didn't pick me because you like knew me. He goes, no, no. He goes, it was an open casting. And then once your name came across, I was like, holy crap, it's Sean, this is going to be great. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's cool. Because I don't want to mm -hmm. get cast. I don't like getting cast because of nepotism, fame, popularity. In fact, I don't even like the whole Twitter thing where producers are like, do you got a Twitter feed? We got to see if the fans like you. Hey, maybe you could count on talent and you can use your talent to judge talent so you don't have to worry about the Twitter feed. And that way, you could do like they used to do where you relied on the strength of your story and your yeah. casting and, and believing in yourself in the show. You're instead so of, traditional. Boy, I'm very traditional. Because, <laughs> man, it irritates me because yeah. I'm like, why should, when somebody <clears throat> goes, well, we got Sean and we got another guy. He got a million Twitter followers. Sean only has 60,000 Twitter followers. Let's go with the other guy. Let's go with the, <laughs> no, let's go with the guy who's better for the part. Yeah. Can we do that? Because I don't like to see yeah. art being watered down yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, anyway, yeah. so my, yeah. my longevity has been, I try not to let any success, I, 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 it's so funny because I think people, I, I get the impression sometimes that people think maybe I'm cocky or arrogant or I'm confident, but I, I am my own worst critic. I am really, really hard on my work. Yeah. And I really try to think about, um, I try to get out of my own head to see what's really, really good or not. So I'll, I don't assume that anything I've done is good. In fact, I oftentimes will hear work I've done back and go, oh my God, that's awful. And every once in a while I hear something, I'm like, oh, who's that guy? He's pretty good. I'm like, oh wait, that's me. Oh, you know, and I'll be surprised. Like, yeah. oh wow, I did it that day. Yeah. yeah. So you've got to try to stay uh, and ne and never stay satisfied, but always want. It's it's this weird middle ground yeah. mm -hmm. of of gratitude. You definitely want to have gratitude, but I don't like it when people try to throw gratitude down my throat to get me to not ask for more. You should be grateful. You're in the Dragon Ball. You shouldn't ask for more money or yeah. or man, one more out of line. I mean, no, I I'm grateful and I'd like some more. Um, yeah. It's yeah. It, it's 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 a balance, and and also I always try to stay curious. Actually, my girlfriend was really helpful about this because I'd gotten in kind of a creative slump right when I met her about six years ago. And because I had this bad habit of like working on cartoons all day and not wanting to watch cartoons when I got home because I'm like, okay, I love cartoons, I love animation, 
but I don't want to do that when I get home. And, and, and I had kind of gotten my own creative bubble, yeah. my own voices, mm -hmm. and, and I believe too much in myself. And she's like, you got to watch a show called Regular Show. And I'm like, oh, hell, what's that show about? I ended up loving it. I ended up becoming friends with Bill Salyers, who's amazing. And, uh, and, and then she goes, oh, you got to watch Adventure Time. And I started watching Adventure Time. And these guys are making vocal choices I never would have thought of. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it was inspiring. And I was like, so really try to stay a fan you know, yeah. of other voice actors, mm -hmm. yeah, and and they can inspire you, yeah, and you listen to the stuff in, that's out there yeah. too. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. You can, exactly. Let's say that like a really great friend of yours yeah. says to you, "Hey, Sean, you know, um, I really want to do what you do. Oh, I, I've I've decided that you know I I, I want to do what you do. I want to become a voice actor, mm -hmm. and I need you to give me do this first." Do this second, and then do this third. It's not going to guarantee that I'm going to become you, but it's going to give me a good chance of at least having a good start, a strong start. Well, what would you tell them? There, well, see, here's the thing: it was one of the reasons I love Simon on on American Idol because when you're, you know, if you ever guys saw Whiplash, mm -hmm. that's yeah. the classical music school I went to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nobody's messing around. It's hardcore, and so I get a lot of times fans who are are are. I think it'd be fun to dally in voice act. I'm like, no, 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 no. We need to check your attitude first before you we even talk about what you need to do. Yeah. Are you passionate about it? Do you constantly live in the ether of voices? Do your friends tell you, oh my God, you, you, or you, you constantly, you know, are you really this animal? Yeah. There's one thing to want to like it, and what I, what I tell uh, when I'm on panels, what I say is, I'm like, you know, a lot of you guys tell me you want to be voice actors, but what I think you really want, most of you, not all of you. Most of you, <clears throat> you want to feel as awesome as the show makes you feel, and you think maybe voice acting will get you closer to that. Right. So a couple things. One, be open to other avenues. In other words, say you want to be a voice actor, and you go down the path, but then all of a sudden you, you end up adapting a script, and you're good at it, and yeah. you like it, yeah. and you're going, or you get good at uh, recording, or you get good at mixing, or you, you see other avenues that... You know, or maybe you figure out, well, you know, I think I want to be a producer. Always be open as you're going. Don't be so right. blinders on. I'm going to be voice actor no matter what. Because two, one of two things can happen. You can end up like a contestant on American Idol who sucks and doesn't know it. Right. And then Simon's going, yo, terrible, get off the set. You're yeah. awful. Yeah. Which is what they said to me in music school when you get there and you think you're the best horn player and then everybody else is just as good as you or better. Yeah. You know, and you're like, oh, I thought I was the shit. And you're not. That's why I love Simon. I'm yeah. like, he's calling it. Yeah. Um, and I don't think that's mean. I don't. I'm like, because especially when you're so clueless as to how bad it is. Totally. So there's that. And so once we check that out, that it's something I can tell you're really passionate about. And as I'm talking to them, I can hear they have something potential there. Because I never want to squish anybody's dreams. But yeah. I also, conversely, don't want to say, you can do anything. And you yeah. can be a voice actor if you put your mind to it. That's yeah. not true. Yeah. It might yeah, be yeah. true in a lot of cases. <laughs> but yeah. a lot of times it's not. And I don't want to be the guy to send you spending all your money moving to California, trying to be a voice actor, falling on your ass. You know, yeah. and you're never going to make it because you never should have done it. You just happen to like voice acting. Yep. So that all being said, and I have bumped into a few people I've met over the years who have become voice actors who I have worked with now who were inspired by various, not necessarily by me, but by other people. Yeah. And now they're working with me. And I'm like, okay, so it can happen. Mm -hmm. That being said, let's see, a uh, couple things. You want to study acting, if you can. Um, you want to. I would say that that's yeah. mildly important. <laughs> that would right? be the most important <laughs> <Just> part. <laughs> Because, you know, doing a lot of different voices is one thing, but if you can't, and I know voice actors who don't do nearly as many voices as I do and work more than me because they're such good actors, they don't need a bunch of other voices because yeah. they're that good. So, so you want to focus on mm -hmm. acting. Um, I think learning to do impersonations is a great way to stretch your voice, yeah. but the only caveat is, is I've seen demos where it's like, some kid's like, I want to be a voice actor, and right. then there's a bunch of impersonations mm -hmm. on there, and they're not very good. Yeah. Now, if they're very good, you can bill yourself as an impersonator or right. a voice matcher. And if you're yeah. going to be an impersonator, yeah. you you know, and you're good at it, that is a that is a voice acting career. Yeah. Being an impersonator or being a voice matcher can be something. A bad impersonation of a famous person that sounds nothing like that, that's well acted, is a new voice. It's a new character. There is that. Yep. Having a microphone and headphones to hear yourself really well, or doing this to where you really understand what you sound like, recording yourself and playing it back. If you're doing commercial co copy, um, there's plenty of magazines you can buy with all kinds of commercial copy in that you can just read into a mic. Um, one of the things I did before I moved to LA is I got on all the major agency websites and I downloaded every single mail demo into wow. Pro Tools, and then I put my headphones on and listened to all of them, and I voice acted along with them, not necessarily to copy or steal anything, I don't want to do that, but to see what notes they're hitting and see what they're doing and see how I work relative to that mm -hmm. and see where I fit in in my own unique way because I don't want to necessarily 
you can be inspired and educated by other voice actors, right. but I don't want to yeah. copy mm -hmm. somebody else's work or somebody else's yeah, of way of doing things. Yeah. But it's also a great educational tool for to sure. do that. So I just want to add to what you were saying. Right. I've been telling people for years that that's how you become great at really anything. Yep. Like when you want to become a great guitar player, what's the first thing you do is you le learn pe other people's mm -hmm. songs, yeah. right? Yeah. And, uh, and then you find guitar players that you just love and you learn everything in how they do and what they do. Yep. Or they're a singer. You probably did that too when oh, you yeah. were growing up like playing tuba or Here, Actually, here's an interesting fact French about singing. Horn. French, French horn. horn. I was a French, French horn. horn. That's all right. You tuba. can probably play the tuba though. Tuba is actually closely related to French horn in a lot of unique <laughs> ways, which we can talk about later in my brass pedagogy class. But, um, uh, <laughs> I love him. That's in part four. You can literally take part him four. any direction, man. <laughs> Let's go. Um, but interesting fact that I do, when, when I, when, a great way to stretch your voice um, that I use, when I missed out being in New York because I was always on the subway, now yeah. that I, I'm driving again and I have a car, is I would sing along to the radio, but here's the trick. If it's Whitney Houston, sing in her range, in your falsetto. Oh, yeah. If it's, don't, don't drop the don't, octave. Yeah. Sing wherever they are and yes. try to do, one of my favorite jokes to do is, uh, I love doing my impression. Ladies and gentlemen, my impression of Brian Johnson warming up for an ACDC oh, concert. Oh, I love this. <laughs> no, do re mi fa so la di do, do mi so la fa so re ti do, do re do mi do fa do so do la, I think I'm ready to go, good to go. Like just doing solfege, you know, like Brian Johnson doing solfege. Yeah. I'm ready to go, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, ready to go, yeah. <laughs> like that's my warm up, <laughs> you know, just to do the soul. I just think Brian yeah. Johnson's soul edging is oh is hilarious. Yes. But I would always sing and, and copy and try to sing, even yeah. if it's a yeah. female, yeah. and even if it's somebody out of your range, or even if it's uh, even if it's a robot voice. Just try to. So when I'd be singing along, or and then when they get to the chorus, pick different harmonies and different parts and see how they fit. Yeah. You're training your ear. You're training Absolutely, everything all man. the that's time. So important. And, if, and my, my my point to the voice actors is, if that lights up your brain more than anything, yeah. and you're good at it or getting good at it, you're probably on the right path. If it lights up your brain and you suck at it, consider a different, you know, no, you, you can still use that to educate yourself yeah. and, and that can turn into yeah. being a great producer. Yeah, or especially great, if you if you can hear the fact that you're not quite there yet, yes. you know? Being like, honest you know, with yourself. Me growing up being a guitar player, I knew how good I was, and I also knew how good I wasn't. Yeah, yeah. You know, by learning other people's stuff, that I can't do that yet, but I want to be able to. And when I got but to the point now. where I was able to, yeah, I was like, oh my god, I just got better. I could do this now. And then a month later, it's like that's easy. Yeah, right. So yeah, it's really cool, man. And so I'm really suspicious of of uh, anybody who's really too complimentary of me or too, I'm like, am I really that good? Do I think it sounds as good as that guy? Who's the best on earth and how are they doing? And really critically yeah. analyzing what they're doing yeah. all yeah. the time without beating yourself up. You know, and that's, yeah. that's, that's I bet that. you that you're crazier than any of the fans that you meet in Florida. <laughs> uh, yes. For sure. Oh, I'm probably they crazier don't even, than Floridians. They don't hold a candle Two of my, to you, Three dude. of my cousins live in Florida. They, oh, you know, and they're oh crazier than me. They, they, hey, let's put uh, Sean on the, on okay, the phone. Oh, game. last question. John. Mystery question. Pick Mystery any question. You want. Is it, is it, are those question marks? Mm. Oh wow! Where did you get these? Table topics original. Yeah, they're so. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> did you put that at the front? No. <laughs> but I always feel like everyone gets the question they're supposed to get. <laughs> what does it say? What does it say? <laughs> if you could master one instrument, <laughs> which would it be? Which would it be? <laughs> well, I already spent 25, 30 years on the French horn. Yeah. Um, and I've said to my yeah. buddy Michael, who's a really good guitarist, um, I said if I could do it all over again, I would have you mastered would the master electric guitar. guitar. Yeah. I'm okay at electric. I'm not okay. I'm average. At Growing best. up, you would have had a lot more sex. There's I would have had a lot more sex. That's just one of the perks. That would have been one Listen, of the perks. You're not grown up yet, and you still have time. <laughs> I, I, you never know. I don't know if it's going to make my girlfriend want to have sex with me more on the electric uh, guitar. No, not not anymore. She doesn't care. It has to happen when well, you're younger, dude. Like, I know. When I, you're I need to build 16, a time machine. That's what it happens. Is what I need. Is oh my god. But I. I, I, yeah, electric guitar. I would have that. I, I would have loved to have been able to just be on stage and, mm. you know, just. <laughs> when I see guys like uh, Steve Ray Vaughan or, oh or, my gosh, or Peter Frampton yeah. or, or, oh or my Seth Ryan, those Peter guys. Frampton, yeah. But, oh, here's a here's a fun fact. Fun fact. And I don't know if I can still do it. I might try right now. When I was a kid, I did not understand. My, one of my favorite records of all time is Peter Frampton Comes Alive. Me too. Yes, it that's, is a yeah. That's what got me to that play is, guitar. Dude, yeah. that is a lucid masterpiece. Yeah. When I was a kid, I did not know that that was a voice box, <laughs> talk yeah. box. So yeah. I tried to do it with my voice. I, and I could <laughs> scat the whole thing. I would go, Me too. What's that thing? And then at one point, And then do you flee? 
you. I'm a dog. 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 I'm a dog.